So today we're going to look at the Kytera Laser Egg 2 from OriginsTech.com. That's the website you'll find this at. This is a air quality, humidity, and temperature sensor. But this is something that's a little bit different from most of the HomeKit sensors in, as you can see. It's actually got an LCD screen on that. Um, as well, using the Kytera app, you're going to get other things like external temperature. So it's kind of cool. Let's take a look at setting this up. So as you can see, this comes um, very well packed large box here. It is obviously HomeKit compatible. You can see there right by the logo. Um, I actually had to order this in from overseas in that this isn't officially released in North America yet from what I understand. Uh, but I definitely wanted to try it out in that I've seen some good things about it online and I wanted to see how accurate this was. So we're going to open this up here. Um, one of the things that that's interesting about this is this as an air quality was originally um, developed to work in China. And I can tell you as someone who's been to Beijing a few times, um, air quality is an issue over there. So if, if you're going to get an air quality product, I think having one that is um, homegrown tested within the Chinese markets, Beijing specifically, is probably a great way to stress test this thing. And they seem to be doing really good. So we're going to see if we can get this open here. The, um, the packing is a little, um, not quite as intuitive as I would like it to be. I did have to struggle with this to get this thing out. As you can see, it's just yanking on it and not not coming out. Um, eventually, I do figure out here that the the box is sealed within another box. So this the packaging here is quite um, quite good. You can see here as it starts to slide out. There we go. So some other interesting things about the Laser Egg 2. This is actually a battery operator, and this uses a micro USB for the charger. So you do not have to always have it um, left in. I haven't quite tested the battery life yet, but they tell me it's a day or two. So I'm going to trust them on that. One of the other things I found interesting about this is there is no HomeKit code in this booklet anywhere to be found, and there's no HomeKit code on the um, unit itself either. So... This took a little bit of, of some figuring out. So I'm gonna, going to uh, do some dual video here and really show you guys how to set this thing up. So we get the plastic all off of this guy. You can see here on the back, we've got the micro USB. That's for the charging um, power button and a mode button. The mode button will actually allow you to cycle through the LCD. So we'll, we'll look at that a little bit. And um, all in all, it's very well packed and it's a solid device. It, you know, you can feel it's uh, reassuringly heavy, re reassuringly solid. Um, seems can, that it's gonna work. So here is the, uh, the Kytera application and we're gonna set up a Laser Egg 2. So this is going to be HomeKit compatible here. So I got a couple different uh, homes that I could add this to. And now it's going to tell me that I need to turn on the Laser Egg and hold down the mode button for two seconds. So I'm going to turn it on. There we go. You can see here it's got a fairly bright LCD, black and white, um, not color. Or actually, no, this is color um, because it does show the different air quality and will give you a different ring around the edges, which hopefully I'll be able to show you guys. So we have the QR code here, which is not a Apple QR code. So this isn't the iOS 11 QR code, which is what I thought at first. So don't don't fall for that trick. So we're going to hold it down. It says, okay, there we go. Now we want to use the HomeKit code, and a HomeKit code appears on the unit itself. So you're going to take that, move it over. I actually took a picture of it, and it's going to ask you to set it up for wireless connection. So this uses the wireless simple configuration protocol, uh, the WSC, and it is going to push whatever the current settings are on your um, iPad or iPhone tablet, and it's going to push that directly over onto the Smart Egg, the Laser Egg 2. So couldn't add Laser Egg 2. This is something I'm seeing more and more of as I add accessories into the um, iOS 11 based home kit. For whatever reason, it fails on the first try, but almost, almost every single time, in fact, every single time that I can remember, we just go back in, we attempt to add it again, we say allow for that WSC to transfer our wireless settings over, and then it just works the second time. 
no rhyme or reason to this. I'm not quite sure why. I haven't seen anything online or, or um, the research that I've done to figure this out. Just haven't seen anything that describes why this is, but that's just the way it is. So we have an air quality sensor here. Then we've also got a humidity sensor. Put that in the favorites. And then last, we have the temperature sensor. So this is really a um, all-in-one kind of room sensor. So now that we've added this, the next thing we have is the ability to set the city as well. And this is kind of cool. So what this is going to do is this is going to tell the the laser egg to exactly what city you're living in and assuming that that city is actually um, within the their their application database it's going to then pull out the air quality for um, air quality stations weather temperature all those kinds of things for the city that you live in so i'm actually in brassard in canada um brassard quebec but uh that's a suburb of the side of montreal so we're going to try montreal there we go so when I first downloaded the Kaitera app a couple months ago, just to get a feel of what this is going to be about, um, Montreal and Canada in general wasn't actually represented in the app here at all. So that's one thing to be aware of. Um, there we go. Push in settings over to the box, over to the um, Laser Egg 2, and now you can see the default room. The air quality currently is 4. What else do we have here? Um, we can set the units, of course. We can go in, we can see uh, data export. We can set the air quality index, whether that is the, uh, no, the North American or the US specific air quality index, the units, metric, those kinds of things. So all this is pretty important. When you change the, the settings, you can see that, that the device is gonna reboot. Um, right now we're showing on the screen, the air quality in Montreal is 65 and then within my house is four, which is which is good. Uh, we've also got a historical data graph here. So this is, we pull the data in from the device. It's gonna be tracked over time. And we've got the air quality index, PM2, uh, temp, humidity. So you've got a lot of data coming out of this thing that you can start to look at and see how the air that you're breathing every day around you, how that actually is affected. So let's go over to the Apple native home app here. So one of the things I noticed is if you look at the air quality here, the air particulate density, particulate size, and air quality, this is more data than I've seen out of some of the other air sensors, air quality sensors like the Netatmo, um, Healthy Home Coach, or the Elgato Eve. You've got more data packed into this. So it's not quite sure how HomeKit is, HomeKit is going to use that, but it's really good to see that this, this amount of data is here. Um, you've also got the humidity sensor. And of course, the temperature sensor. So the other thing I want to remind you guys of is that in the native Apple Home app, most of the things like the air quality, the um, humidity, they're not available from an automation standpoint. So you're going to have to go and look at something like the Elgato Eve app or the third-party Home app. Um, Hesphorus is a new one that I've just started to play with that really exposes these out to HomeKit and allows you to do automations and other interesting things like turn on air purifiers or turn on a humidifier or a dehumidifier if that's what you're looking to do um, and really kind of automate and allow your house to respond to the conditions in your house, which is what this is all about, right? So with that, Thanks again for watching. If you uh, found this useful, please give me a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. And definitely check in the notes below if you want more information on, on how to build a smarter home. Check out the Udemy course. There's a coupon there. Thanks, guys.